טלי, מה נשמע? בסדר. איך את מרגישה? איזה יפה. יפה. איפה? את נראית יפה. תודה רבה, גם לך. Well, I'm delighted. Uh, I'm delighted, delighted to be here, Omar. I think it's a wonderful initiative uh, that, you've, that you've started. Uh, I think it's all, we need more people like you. And I'm really looking forward to, to, to learn and to, to hear about the wonderful history uh, of the community in, uh, you know, in, uh, in Mosul and hope that um, it's not gone forever and uh, the roots can, uh, you know, it can take root again, God willing. Thank you. Uh, and I would also like to welcome my mentor, Professor Goldschmidt. Um, we still we still wait for uh, Sir Abdel Nabi, Maurice Abdel Nabi. Thank you, thank you for attending, uh, Professor Goldschmidt. Hello. Uh, this is my nap time, because I'm uh, six hours behind you. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing this lying down. Uh, but, uh, I, I would also like to welcome, if, if, you, if you allow me to call you Uncle Emil. Me? Yes. <laughs> Why Uncle? <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is how Sally calls you. I, mean, I don't know how to call you otherwise. I mean, it's, it's kind of like... Just Emil. Emil will do. Okay. Uh, Ustaz Maurice, Ustaz Maurice. Maurice. Ustaz Maurice. Ima, istakli alme. Dina Attar is here. That's impressive. Thank you. Sad Omar, can I say something? Uh, absolutely. I, I have been trying to understand the Mosul accent, which is very similar to uh, the Iraqi Jewish accent, you know. That's correct. Do, do, you speak, do you speak the accent? Do you speak the dialect? I, I'm not from Mosul, no. I'm, I'm way down from Basra. So, totally different dialect. But the dialect, the Iraqi Jewish dialect, mm -hmm. is very, very similar to the Muslawi dialect. That's absolutely correct. I'm, surprised to, I'm so, so surprised to find some words which we use and is never used in Baghdad, never used in Baghdad, but used in Muslim. So many words, you know, like we say, you say had, had meaning hot, yeah. Right? Uh, in Baghdad, they would say har. They, ah. they wouldn't say, you know, so chili, chili hot. <laughs> right? You say, uh, Baghdad, they say shijar. Right? There are so many words that you, that in Mosul and, and the Jews speak the same. Sahih, that's correct. Uh, Uh, 
I, I, will, I will start first by inter introducing myself. Um, I just want to tell you that I will be speaking in both Arabic and English because we have very important people here who do not speak English, so I will have to tell them the same thing I say in English also in Arabic. I am Omar Mohammed. I am a historian from Mosul. Uh, I have been living in Mosul my whole life until the so-called Islamic State or Daesh occupied the city. Uh, then I started documenting the uh, history of Mosul under the rule of the terrorists. And then I had to flee the city of Mosul. There is, there is a reason why I am seeking more knowledge about the Jewish history of Mosul, which I will explain through this event. And I would really like to thank Sally for giving me this opportunity because without her, we wouldn't have this beautiful gathering. I call it a family gathering rather than just looking into the history of Mosul. Uh, I would also like to thank my dear friend, Rabbi uh, Asa uh, uh, Baich, who is from the United States, from New York, who sent me, finally sent me a copy of this book. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we, we both worked on translating and geolocating the houses and families uh, of Jewish, the Jewish community in Mosul. I grew up in a city that was always supposed to be a city of diversity, inclusion, uh, multi-ethnicities and multicultural. But I was shocked that it took me very long time to discover that we had a Jewish community in Mosul. I started asking why the elderly didn't tell me that we had the Jewish community in Mosul, why we didn't have uh, this important uh, community that was forced and deport deported out of the city. So this is an attempt. I cannot fix the uh, mistakes of the past, but I can at least uh, try to make sure that we don't make the same mistakes in the future. And as a historian, I feel that I am obliged and responsible for uh, making the narrative, a comprehensive narrative that includes everyone in the city of Mosul. And this time, as my friend Rabbi Asa says, uh, you have to bring back the missing piece of Mosul, which is the Jewish community. Uh, my friend Sally and I spoke today. Uh, as I told her, I also spoke with uh, 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 Maurice, Sam Maurice Abdel Nabi. I didn't feel strange when I spoke to them. I felt I am related to them because this is the reality. This is the uh, uh, fact that we have to raise and if we want really to build a peaceful future, we have to be brave enough to acknowledge the wrongs and the mistakes of the past in order to move forward. Now, if you allow me, I will speak in Arabic. Shukran jazeelan ala kill li havaru bhada li ka, sawa an kintim min Israel, min London, aw min ay makan bil alam, ana kthir sa'id انه انتم موجودين اليوم انا ما اقول هذا لقاء انا اقول هذا اجتماع عائلة انا اسمي عمر محمد مؤرخ من فوصل نفس المدينة اللي انتم جيتم منها انا كبرت وترعرعت بمدينة الموصل القديمة اهلي كل من الموصل القديمة انا انصبت بصدمة انه ما عرفت انه كان عندنا يهود بالموصل إلا لما كبرت أنا بنفسي عرفت هذا الشيء ما حد قال لي فصرت أسأل إنه ليش ما كنتم تقولون إنه كان أكو يهود بالموصل ليش ما تحكون إنه كان هذه المدينة بها أكثر من فئة أعيش فيها فظليت أبحث إلى أن بالأخير وصلت إلى كثير أشياء ومن منا إنه أكثر صديقي الرابي آسا بعيش هو مدينة نيويورك ساعدني بأنه أحصل على نسخة من كتاب عزراء أكيد كلكم تعرفون الكتاب هو أهم كتاب الكتاب عن الشنيجة أجل الشنيجة أوكي أوكي فاللقاء اليوم اللقاء اليوم هو لحد 
اللقاء اليوم هو بداية حتى نجمع هذول اللي كانوا من يهود الموصل إنه يحضرون إنه يعبرون إنه يعبرون عن ماضيهم اللي كان بمدينة الموصل سواء كان ماضي حزين أو ماضي سعيد لكن توتما هي أستاذ موريس أنا آسف استاذ عمر استاذ عمر تقدر انت تسوي ميوت على على كلم تمام هي افضل افضل شيء انه تسوي ميوت للكل حتى يكون الصوت واضح ولا ما نسمع ما نفهم اشكرك على باي باي اوكي استاذ موريس ما يقدر فالفكره انه الفكره انه انا انا ما طقت ان اجي لاسرائيل حتى التقي بكم بس شكرا للتكنولوجيا اللي خلتنا انه نطيق نلتقي عن بعد. انا اعتقد انه كمؤرخ هذه مسؤوليتي الاخلاقيه انه احكي معاكم انه اضعيكم المساحه انه تحكون انه انتم تقولون اذا اذا ما زلتم تحبون انه انتم تنتمون للموصل انه تاريخ الموصل اللي راح يصير بالمستقبل ما ممكن انه يستمر بدون وجود اليهود مره اخرى في هذا التاريخ لانه الصوره غير مكتملة الصورة فاقدة روحها ولازم إحنا نحيي روح الموصل من خلال نشر روح التسامح ونشر هذا التآلف بين الجميع إحنا مختلفين نعم لكن هذا الاختلاف ما يمنعنا أن نكمل سوا أنا أشكركم لأنه حاضرين اليوم واسمحوا لي أنه راح أحكي بالإنجليزي مع سالي لأنه أكو آخرين ما يحكون عربي فلازم أحكي معها إنجليزي بس راح أحكي معاكم عربي مرت اللخ شكرا جزيلا سالي you 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 cannot imagine how happy I am today and as I say as I told you this is not an accessory it shouldn't be this is not not to say that wow we had a beautiful past no we care about the future we care about building a comprehensive future that brings people together and that we accept each other no matter what, where, we, where we come from, that we can live together no matter what religion we represent, no matter what ethnicity we represent. And when I saw the picture first time you showed me, which is the picture of your father, uh, who puts the, the, the uh, face or the tarpoosh on his head, I didn't see someone foreigner from Mosul. I saw someone from Mosul who looks like my uncle, who looks like my father, who looks, even someone joked, I, I think, I think uh, His Excellency Karim Khan told me that one uh, of the people in the picture looks like me. Uh, some people also told me this. Because that's because we are all humans, but uh, I want you to start with the picture that you showed me. Uh, I think everyone has seen this picture, which uh, has a note that this was uh, a party in Mosul and it's now for 74 years since this photo was taken and it was also taken in October. So we are, we are in October after 74 years discussing that very picture that you sent me. Omar, thank you very much and thank you for introducing me and um, thank you so much also for organizing this event because um, it's really exciting. I don't have a lot of information, but I know that I know people who do. And so it's just a real privilege actually to have an opportunity to connect people. And um, so thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy about this event. And it, yes, it started with a photograph because you're on Twitter, I'm on Twitter, you posted one photograph, I recognized the photograph, then I sent you another photograph, and that's the one you're now talking about that everybody has seen. And actually it's my grandfather in the picture, he's at the very back wearing a fez. I had no idea what the party was because I can't read Arabic. And when I sent you the notes on the back, you kindly came back and translated it for me and said, well, actually, it's a brit, it's a circumcision party, because I thought October may be Sukkot, but it's a bit late, maybe uh, that's the only other thing it could be. And 
other than that, I know very little about it. But what's very exciting, I know already a couple of people have contacted you and said that they also recognize a grandparent in the photograph. So let's hope that a conversation that starts just with a simple sharing of photograph on Twitter um, can take us to places and information that we might not otherwise have been able to access. Thank you, Sally. I, I, I see that uh, uh, Edmond wants to speak. M may you unmute yourself, please? Yes. yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, we do. Actually, it's very exciting to be able to connect with you. I, I was born in Mosul. I left when I was 10 years old. And as you can see, I'm an old man now. But currently, I live in California. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of uh, Palo Alto? Yes, I've been to California. You heard of Silicon Valley? That's where I live now. Yeah. So it's, uh, but I also remember a lot of uh, things from Mosul. I went to school, Janab Bashtabia, Kan Madrasa Yehudiya Hunak. Madrasa Elians. Badak Eliam. Kan Mahalit Cholik Lula. So on Passover, Aqua Eid is more Passover, Eid al Fusah, mm -hmm. we used to go picnicking there. And it was filled full of uh, daisy. Hi. You know what daisy? Memun. I need a zoom. So, Omar, no. can you still hear me? Yes, I do. So, you need to learn Hebrew also. <laughs> I am trying. I am trying. I am trying. But inshallah, but we must talk. But we will talk with one another. Thank you. Thank you. But the policy, the Malik or the government? Doctor Shilboli. Maybe the government will not let us. The government. لإدوان شكر لأنه هو يضيق يحكي عن هذا الموضوع هو كان يحاول أنه يقنع الحكومة أنه تعمل شيء إدوان شكر has been trying and I have seen him myself speaking to the Minister of Culture in London telling him that it's the time to give back the Iraqi citizenship to the Israelis to the Jewish who were deported from Iraq I give the floor to my, to my dear friend Edwin Shukur to speak about this. I admire you so much, uh, uh, Edwin Shukur. Shukur. Uh, but if I may, Omar, you should have uh, corrected uh, the respected uh, brother that spoke because there was no old man speaking. <laughs> <laughs> so, Osad Edwin, the floor is yours. Uh, I wasn't planning, Stad Omar. Uh, you are my hero for the, what you have done uh, for making this subject on the international agenda, on the table. And uh, through your work and through your research, we were able to raise this many times. And I, I, I keep on raising it at the highest level. The truth is, uh, for all that, it is. I always fight for Iraq's name and Iraq's reputation as the cradle of civilizations. I do not fight for the Jews and the Jewish shrines and sites. But I go to Mosul, as you know, I've been a couple of times and I walk by and I look at this Sasson uh, synagogue and I say, my God, Iraq should be so proud that they have uh, antiquities like this, that they have civilizations like this. And why? Why would you ignore that? Why would you actually uh, uh, change it? Why would you take Al Kifil, for example, and make it into a brand new mosque when you have something that was there for 2,600 years? Why would you not celebrate Yona, uh, Yunus? Why would you not take the mikvah, the ritual uh, uh, wells in, in Mosul, and say, here is Mosul? 
this is most of the place since Nineveh has kept all these civilizations. So when I fight, Omar, I fight for Iraq. I fight for the name of Iraq. And I fight for, its for the civilization that we're seeing, unfortunately, vanishing in the last 17 years, more than they did in 2,600 years. Thank you. We are, we are all with you and support you in this uh, uh, fight to bring back uh, Iraq to, uh, uh, to where it belongs, to it belongs to the international civilized, global civilization that should uh, uh, separate peace rather than hate and conflict between communities. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Ustad Maurice uh, uh, to speak. He is going to speak in Arabic, so uh, 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 if you don't understand Arabic, I will uh, translate to you after he finishes. Sir Maurice, Sir Maurice, this money. I shall hear a city of Lo Lo Shamroti, Mishushi, the bear, Shuya Gido, Leomar, Shani, Lo Shomea, Velo, and Lo Shomea Otam, Velem, the Hebloish Maroti. I think he's speaking in the phone. Uh, okay. No, he can't hear. He says he can't hear us. Maurice, this man He can't hear us. I wonder what he needs to press. Uh, Maurice said that he can hear us and the. Uh, he can't, can't see, hear I you. I try to I try to help so him now, yeah, okay? Okay, what well, well, perhaps he doesn't have the microphone on. Probably. Uh, so I I will invite Professor Avino and Shalim to speak, please. Well, first Omar, thank you so much for organizing it and putting a uh, all of us here on a Zoom uh, meeting uh, and uh, bringing some memories all together. Uh, I haven't, uh, you know, uh, prepared anything to speak on, but I must say that just hearing some voices of some people, and especially Sally, talking about as mem how memory comes back, um, it was something similar with me. I must say that I was raised as a child with stories. So words and stories from Iraq were part of the whole family. And they, uh, and, but it remained in my mind a very um, distant land and they uh, also, all, almost imaginary. I must say stories about the house or the family remain in a kind of a dreamlike uh, vision. And I was sometimes even wondering if my aunts, because mainly my aunts talked about it, not my father, uh, so I wonder if this was true at all. I felt that there was a lot of exaggerations and the uh, fantasy put into the stories, but uh, the reality came with a picture, with actually several pictures that Maurice Navi uh, sent to my father and I was able to look at them as well. And these pictures brought all of a sudden reality to the stories. And I cherish these pictures. I, uh, uh, they, are, they are all taken in a specific moment. Maybe it's the same. I don't think it's the same picture that you, Sally, are talking about because the picture I have from, from Maurice are showing, I think, a wedding. There is a bride there in the house and a lot of congregation of other people. Uh, but uh, from these uh, pictures, I got the whole information. As an art historian, looking at the uh, architectural story, as an architectural historian as well, I was uh, fascinated mainly by the house. And a, uh, uh, my brother, who might be also on Zoom here, Lior, who is an architect, uh, and I were trying desperately, you know, to create the whole plan of the house just by pictures and look for some other uh, similar material that is uh, um, related to it. Um, um, I think if Zvi is still on, yeah, I see him. Zvi is yeah. here. He could even tell much more about uh, other uh, project uh, which uh, has to do uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, space uh, and the uh, and the Mahallat al Yahud in uh, in Mosul. Yes, I will speak. I will speak to him. But first, I would like to ask you if you remember when we first communicated with each other. 
from our mutual friend uh, uh, Andreas Moore. You sent me you sent me photos uh, uh, of the school, and there were some people, and also the photo of your house back in Mosul. I don't know. I don't know. As you say, this is very important point. What you raised is whether it's whether these stories were the imagination of them who were still missing Mosul. But there's something very important about all of this is that, and I told this to Sally. Once you are from, from Mosul, you are forever from Mosul. So wherever you go, you will always take this with you. And it's very important to bring back these stories to analyze them, to, to create a picture of what was happening there. And there is also a very important point, which I actually address as V about it, is why we don't have enough information and the stories about women from most of the Jewish women. Are you asking me right now? Yes. Okay, well, let me say right away that we have, uh... Our community produced the most important uh, uh, woman in the early modern period, you know, the only woman who was ever ordained as a rabbi and recognized as an Orthodox rabbi in the pre-modern uh, Jewish world, which is Osnat. Yes. yes. I know that the Kurds are claiming her, but uh, I'm Osnawi Jews, you know, I am a descendant of her, um, like many others in, in, in Mosul, and, uh, you know, she was uh, very active there, you know. So uh, maybe because she's such a tower of... Uh, um, um, of memory, you know, and so many people claim her that we forgot to talk about others, but there were many, many others. And I think that uh, um, it's time indeed to change that, you know, I mean, Mosul is no different from other places in the world, you know, the neglect to write, you know, the history, uh, histories uh, um, uh, of women, you know, um, in this regard, you know, unfortunately, we're not different. Um, but still, we do have, you know, a very, very important person, you know, a rabbi in the 16th century uh, a, a, that actually led the community, and it was quite unique um, in the Jewish world, uh, perhaps in the whole world, that you would see a, a person uh, uh, like this, you know, leading a um, relatively small community and being recognized, at least in the Ottoman world and uh, in Syria for her poetry and for her leadership. And of course, the, every single Muslim uh, grew up on stories of how, you know, someone came to her roof, tried to steal something, and she made him freeze, you know, with one single word of magic and stuff like that, you know. Um, so that's, a, that's an off-the-cuff response to your question, which I wasn't, I admit I wasn't prepared to. Uh, thank you for your contribution. Well, uh, Omar. Yes. When the Jews left uh, Mosul, there was no university even in Mosul. That's the correct. university in Mosul started in 1962. I have a Christian friend here in California who is a professor. He graduated from the University of Mosul. His wife graduated from the University of Mosul. If you wanted to get higher education at the time, you had to go either to Baghdad or to London. That's America correct. didn't exist, it was too far. Yes. So, but now I, also the population in Mosul was very small at the time. Now I think it's in the millions. Yes. So you cannot compare the time that the Jews left uh, and the time of today or 50 years ago. That's correct. By the it's way, I think you said that the Jews had to leave. They left by choice. Nobody made them leave. They left by choice. Some of those who chose to stay in, most, in, in New York, they moved to Baghdad. Mm -hmm. Until the 70s, there were some Jews in Baghdad also. Yeah. Jews that originally from Mosul. As you know, Baghdad grew over the years and um, inhabitants of Baghdad, be Shahrabani, Inin, Maslawi, they're all from ba in Baghdad, but they're originally not from Baghdad. So yes. there was migration as Baghdad became big on commerce and business and all that. People were moving from Basra, from Shahraban, from Anna, from all these places. That's how uh, people from Mosul also migrated to Baghdad at the time. Thank you. And unfortunately, what happened in the last, uh, between 2014 and 17 in Mosul, it's all destroyed. I, I, my memory is 
Narat al Hadba Nabi Yunus. This is the only thing that I remember. Now it's gone, so nothing that I could remember anymore. It's, it's coming, it's but coming hopefully, we'll, we'll, hopefully, I'm an American, so hopefully that in the Mustaqbal, the Jinzu and Zul come home at Bul Mosul. I would like to give the floor to uh, uh, Emil, please. Sorry? Is that to me? Yes. Did you yes. say? Yes. You raised your hand. Yeah. yeah I, it's the question whether the Jews left Iraq willingly or by choice. That is not correct. If you make the atmosphere so oppressive that you have no chance to live there, mm -hmm. you're forced to leave. That, can't, that doesn't mean by choice. That's correct. As far as I'm concerned, the Jews were expelled from Iraq. They were deported. Because they, were ma they made their life so impossible. They can't go to university. They can't study. They can't trade. They can't have their own businesses. So what, what else is there? Especially young people. They wanted to go, and, and the, the first people who went to Israel, who, who registered after the law of denaturalization came in, were the young people. Yes, and uh, yesterday when I was speaking to Saad Maurice, uh, uh, maybe he told me a very sad story that the decision for the confiscation of their house was given to them on Shabbat, and this was Yes, it was the oppression. It was uh, the the intolerance. That's why that's why we are trying to bring back all of these memories in order to start again. We have to acknowledge the mistakes in order to move forward. Because if I am from a different generation that is not responsible for what happened in the past, yet I have a responsibility for all, for what will happen in the future. If I don't take the step, if I don't tell the people uh, the full picture of what happened and the full picture of the city of Mosul and the rest of Iraq, which also applied to everywhere, if we don't build a comprehensive and a, a full uh, narrative that has the diversity, but not only the diversity, but also the inclusion, because diversity alone is not enough. You have you need to have the inclusion. You need to accept the other, no matter what, how different that other is. That's, that's the main reason why we are all here today. I don't know if Ustad Maurice uh, can, can speak now. Uh, Ustad Maurice, uh, take the If not, Omar, then I will. Ustad uh, oh, Omar, yes. Ustad Omar. He can, he can, he can. Sa Maurice. It's a three dahki and a lazimaki with Arabi. Sa Ramar. Hakit is a hakimar. Arabi. Just a jama. It's a tahki man. Had that is my minimum. One of my dinner came out of the Catrit for Chekhosusi. Oh, by then, Sa Ramar. I show for the only Jama اللي كانوا لو يبقون بالموصل ما كان راح يشوفون هالاشياء اللي انت اليوم قد تشوفها هون بال 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 بالزوم ها؟ الو؟ ايه تمام بس اطيق 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 تحكي هسه اطيق تحكي استاذ موريس اطيق تحكي اطيق احكي هسه مر احكي؟ أنا أفضل أنه تسأل الباقي لأنه كثير أكو جماعة اللي قيدون يحكون أتشوف؟ فقيسألوك أسئلة همين ولهذا أحسن تجاوب على الأسئلة نحن نعيم المجال نعيم المجال أوكي أوكي طيب مجال أوكي؟ تمام تمام أوكي أرجع 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 مرة ثانية أوكي uh, I received I received uh, messages from two people. I don't know if they are here. If you are here, please raise your hand because you identified your grandfathers in the photo Sally uh, published on Twitter. Uh, 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 I don't know if, if you are here. I hope that both of you are here. Uh, probably they, they couldn't attend because I received 
uh, uh, two messages from them saying that they were able to identify the yes i think someone 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 raised that lily is that you the one who identified the photo it's not me no it's not me okay did you Sorry. want to speak, did you want to speak? Um, I would like to, to uh, ask a question uh, about um, documents and photographs and other things that uh, um, that belong to the belong to the Jews. They used to belong to the Jews. Are there any um, documents or any in, in uh, official um, places in, in uh, the city hall? Uh, or or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Bil baladia, dampul bil baladia, or. I want. I have many. 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 I have I was surprised to find that uh, because I thought that there are no uh, 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 left documents and information about the Jewish population of Iraq. Then I kept digging in, in the archives in Paris, in London, in other places, until I found how we uh, actually missed a trove of documents. Because in, after 1948, most of the documents related to the Alliance Israelis, uh, uh, Universal, and other documents, they were moved to Moscow under the title of Moscow Fund. And then, they were returned back to Paris, where they are now located. And I have found enough uh, big, big trove of documents about the Jewish population of Mosul, Baghdad, and Basra. Who, uh, also, the correspondence between foreign uh, 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 consuls and ambassadors, which includes lots of information about the Jewish population, including, but not limited to, the a uh, 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 plan and the blueprint of uh, uh, Sasson uh, Synagogue in Mosul. I have the uh, 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 blueprint plan of the of the uh, uh, synagogue. I have uh, enough names written in Hebrew and other documents of children and other people. Also the uh, seals of the uh, uh, leaders of the Jewish community and much more information. And I am happy to say that we have enough archives to build back the Jewish uh, history of Iraq, including Mosul, Baghdad, and Basra. So yes, there is enough information, including the Ottoman archives, which I just found a document related to Abdel Nabi family, uh, 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 a merchant from Abdel Nabi family whose sheep were stolen by three people and they were uh, actually punished by uh, 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 the government to be chained for three for two years and the others for uh, six months so there are there are enough information but what is more important and uh, 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 especially now we are in this time of technology we don't want to rely only on books we want you to speak we want you to record and register all the memories we have because there is no other place or there is no other way to find this information only with you. And if you want to help us to build back this narrative, if you want to help uh, this history to be brought back, you have to speak, you have to tell the story. Uh, I know it might be painful to you, but it's important to speak. And I am here to help you to document and record these stories. Yes, Sally. Oh, actually, can I can I speak? Yes, of course. Um, so uh, I'm with uh, I work in the Babylonian Jewry Heritage Museum uh, Center, and uh, we also we have uh, we have we did a documentary. We did some documentary. We have also some uh, items uh, exhibited. Uh, and also in the safe. Uh, I just posted uh, on our Facebook page uh, story of
of the Torah and the, the uh, Torah's case, uh, how it was uh, taken out of Iraq. So it is in a video of Yafa Masasa, whose parents and family is uh, from uh, Mosul, Yafa Masasa. Uh, and so we have uh, many things, and also in our library, uh, we have many things uh, of Mosul. Uh, we have also, uh, I, I, we found also in the uh, Iraqi Jewish archive website, uh, some um, correspondence between uh, the community, the uh, leaders of the community, and the, the, uh, the community management in, in uh, Baghdad. Uh, I have so seen there that. are many things that you have seen the correspondence in the Jewish uh, in the Iraqi Jewish archive. Uh, yeah. I, have, I have examined the, the documents myself. If you may allow me to give the floor to Sally because she is our uh, uh, guest and speaker, uh, uh, a key speaker today, and I would like to give with her uh, uh, some of the yes, uh, Sally, please. The floor is please. yours. Hi, okay, thank you. Um, I've just I've just had a message from um, a fellow travel writer, which is what I've been doing for the last 25 years, saying, I want to hear your story. <laughs> so um, I'll tell you what I know, which is very little, um, but I hope that some of the things that I can tell you will spark other people's memories. So the things that I know, it's not out of books, it's not from somebody's thesis, they're very random things because as children we didn't speak Arabic so we missed that chance to absorb the things that some of the grown-ups were talking about when my father was together with friends and relatives we weren't absorbing a lot of information but one thing that always seemed to me was Mosul seemed like a mythical city you know it was like a lost city it was like Atlantis it was somewhere that was always spoken about with love and affection everything there was fantastic from the night sky which dad always described as being absolutely beautiful of course there would have been not too much electricity not too much light pollution how in the heat of the summer mattresses would be brought up onto the roof and everyone would sleep on the roof which of course to us was extraordinary because the roofs here are like this they're not flat so it's not a possibility even if you ever got that hot here in Britain which it doesn't mythical things like that and how beautiful their house was and that my grandmother's kitchen was all the cupboards were hand carved they were all carved in wood and they were really ornate. It was an absolutely beautiful room. And just things like food, fruit and vegetables, watermelon the size of missiles, which you can't get good watermelon in Britain. It's never ripe enough, so it's never sweet. Um, you know, the most enormous peaches, the most enormous tomatoes. In Britain in the 1960s, a lot of our fruit was tinned, it was preserved, because you only get certain things in the winter and the summer is a short season. But we always had an abundant bowl of fruit at home. We always had grapes. Most British children in the 1960s weren't eating grapes. They weren't eating basmati rice. They weren't eating aruk. They weren't eating... Um, Burgal or Adas or all the things that, that, that the Iraqis who left bring with them and you know don't, don't, don't want to leave behind. And he, I knew that they lived in the Jewish quarter but I didn't know exactly where that was. My grandfather was a craftsman, he was a goldsmith. I think his workshop was in the house but I think he had a shop in a different location and that was on the opposite side of the Tigris of the river and my father told me that sometimes if he was tired he had a long day he didn't want to walk home the long way around over a bridge so he would pile up his jalabia on his head and he would swim across the river 
because he was an incredibly strong swimmer. Well, you know, for an, a young English kid, that's just, that's the most extraordinary story you could ever hear because, you know, every, everyone at home was going to work in a suit and tie, catching a bus or going by a car. You know, the idea of sticking your clothes up on your head and being strong enough to swim across the river to get home. All of these things took on um, a sense of real, real past, but really um, inaccessible culture that we couldn't get to because we didn't, you know, we knew we couldn't go there. So, um, oh, and, and the other thing I must tell you is sweets, Manal Senma, which you cannot get here. The first time I ever ate it as a child, I just thought it was the most heavenly thing I had ever, ever eaten. It was a sweet that was like, well, it was just like some, like a prize. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's called, it's called the, the translation of Manisema, it's called something from heaven. So you are, you are <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> well, that's exactly it. To, you know, to my palate, which was used to different sweets and chocolate, this is just still the most amazing thing. And fistock, I mean, we used to get sent big bags of fresh fistock and dad used to salt it and, and we, used to, we used to roast it in the oven. We didn't know the English word for fistock until I was probably about 15 or 16. And one day we saw a packet in Marks and Spencer's and I picked it up and I said, look, look, it's pistachio in English. We didn't know the word because there was none. So there was this sense of muscle being a really rather wonderful place that people missed. You know, it wasn't, oh, we've gone, that was then, this is now. Thank you, thank you, Sally. Uh, I would like to call Dina Attar, who just finished her PhD on the Jew Jewish population of Mosul. Oh, wow. uh, I don't know if you hear me, uh, Dina, I texted you, but you didn't respond. But the floor is yours, please. Okay, thank you very much, Amar. Um, this is a wonderful meeting and it's just kind of extraordinary to be listening to other people talking about the Jews of Mosul because for, for so long I've had the experience of explaining to people that there used to be Jews in Mosul and nobody had ever heard of it. Um, so this is, this is fantastic. Um, I have to just correct one thing. It was, um, I did my PhD many years ago in a totally different area, but I, I've just finished doing a, a master's at... Um, University College London in their Department of Hebrew and Jewish Studies and my, my dissertation was on the Jewish community of Mosul and um, my main source, well I had two, I had two main sources, uh, one was Ezra Laniada's book and the other was um, information from my father, now my father died now 16 years ago but um, I, as well as the stories I grew up hearing, because he was from Mosul, um, I also had letters from him because I corresponded with him um, in the 1980s and 1990s when I first started to get interested in, in finding out more. And so I asked him various questions and he wrote me very long letters in reply with quite a lot of information. So as well as the, um, the stories I grew up with, and as Sally was saying, you also grow up with food memories. I mean, my dad used to say that in Mosul, in the very hot weather, sometimes they would just eat bread and vinegar, and that would be a kind of refreshing summer meal. And he just remembered things like cucumbers and fruit and, and uh, you know, throughout his entire life, he was passionate about buying good fruit and vegetables. <laughs> he used to do a lot of shopping for fruit and vegetables. We used to just... I remember once my mother saying to me, um, do you know how many cabbages we've got? We've got five cabbages in the flat and we're not even having cabbage tonight because there's other vegetables that we have to eat sooner. So, you know, he just couldn't stop himself buying fruit and veg. And um, uh, I wrote once many years ago about this salad we used to make in the summer. And this is in London in the 1960s. He used to send us kids to Covent Garden Market, which was in London where Covent Garden is now, and that's where the fruit and vegetable market used to be. And we used to have to buy crates of, of green peppers 
and boxes of tomatoes because you couldn't just buy peppers in the shop in those days. And we would make these salads with tomatoes and peppers and vinegar and salt. And it was my father's recipe. So I kind of remember that as being sort of the food, the sort of things that people would have eaten. Um, and and uh, halal, we called it halal manisana. I remember that. And I had the same feeling as a child. You know, what is it? And I've never been able to buy it. It was, it, you know, I used to think that was what that was what proper Turkish delight was supposed to be. But then when you buy Turkish delight here, it's really disappointing. It's nothing like that. Um, but so, so that I have those memories. I had my father's letters, and he would he would kind of he he was um he was a, a very bright um, scholar in Mosul. He got um he got a, he came to England because he got a scholarship from the Iraqi government. And um, so he came to study maths and physics in London. He was never able, he went back to, to Mosul a couple of times when his family was still there, but he could never return to live there. But um, he, he, he was at school in Mosul and um, he, he was obviously very bright, but, but when I asked him about his schooling and I compared what he told me with what's in the official sources and um, you know, the Alliance, uh, Israeli it was kind of very proud of setting up all these schools and so on and you can read about some of them in Ezra Laniado's book there's a lot particularly about um, the later period because um, Laniado himself became a, a teacher for a short while in Mosul and so and a lot of the memories are for, from younger pe people who are a little bit younger than my father um, but, um, but according to my father when he was at school most of the kids didn't even finish school I mean, most of them, a lot of them didn't make it to secondary school and the ones that did, did didn't stay on till the end. And he, 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 he kept a lot of detailed records throughout his entire life. So he kind of gave me the figures of how many children there were that actually, and of course he means boys, not girls, um, how many of them actually stayed the course in his class of the ones that started with him, how many of them actually finished. And uh, not very many. So there was a. Um, so in terms of the the education opportunities that people had at that time, um, in his time it was not that great. Although it was in some ways better for the Jewish community than it was for the rest of the people in Mosul. Um, but for girls, it was extremely limited. So it's kind of not surprising that we don't hear many of the voices of the women from the community. And that was something I was particularly interested in when I was uh, writing my own dissertation. And I, and I had to kind of stand back from Ezra Laniado's book. I think it's a fantastic book. And it's, in a way, it's a homage to his community. But he didn't really interview women. There's very few women in it. There's, there's quite a lot from um, uh, Shoshana Abili, who became a, a member of the Knesset, She's a very well-known, prominent woman, but she actually left Mosul when she was very young. Um, and I don't know how long her family had been in Mosul with a surname like Arbili. I guess they perhaps haven't been there very long. Um, but, um, but there's very few other voices of women, but you can try and, you can try and reconstruct some of, um, of you know, what, what we can know about um, the lives of women. There's, there's also an interview that, um, Ezra Laniado uh, gave to um, another um, academic, uh, Professor Yastro, who was interested in the Mosul dialect. So if anyone can get hold of his article on that, he, he did a sort of analysis of what makes it distinctive, uh, the, the Mosul Jewish dialect. And in that interview, the way he did it, because, you know, being a, a professor of linguistics, what he wanted to do was just get his interviewees just talking naturally. So he'd get a sense of their vocabulary, their accent, and so on, when they were just talking about a subject where they'd have a lot to say. So his question, his opening question was, how did people used to make bread in Mosul? And then Ezra Laniado goes into this wonderful description. It's, it's him and his wife as well speaking about it. And, um, and you can tell from this account that there were a lot of women involved in the process uh, professionally. So it wasn't just thing that they would be, something they would be doing at home that people would kind of um, have the flour at home or they might, and they would take their flour and then they would uh, or, or take their dough and they would get it kneaded by the women that were there to do that. And then, uh, so, so you can tell that there were a lot of women involved in food production as well as in textiles and, and they, were, they were working outside the home as well as working inside the home. But of course, inside the home, they were doing everything. You know, they, they, my grandmother apparently 
made all the family's clothes. She made their mattresses, um, as well as doing all the foodstuffs and so on. She taught herself um, how to forge meat so she could do that for the community. Um, so, and she was, she was illiterate. She never had the chance to go to school and learn to read and write, but she was obviously working all the time. And I, I, can, I, did, I did meet my grandmother when I was a, um, a young child, and I don't have very many memories of her. She didn't speak any English, and I, I spoke hardly any Arabic. But I can remember her making kubba, and I can remember being completely amazed because I didn't know what this was. And, I, and she, she served us this meal, and I just thought, how did the meat get inside the dumpling? How is that even possible? I had no, I've never eaten anything like it, and it was just... <laughs> Oh, you have to be tied to the kitchen. Well, I can just remember the sort of the amazing you know, how amazing that meal as was. As, want, as much as I want to, to give you more time to speak, but I have to make justice and uh, invite uh, uh, Saad Maurice Abdul Nabi. Yeah. Okay. I have, I have to, 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 to give him the floor to speak. He has a lot to say. Saad Maurice, uh, uh, I think he's gone. I think he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, man. Too much English, that's why. <laughs> Omar. Omar. Oh, wait, Omar. Sorry. Nice, man. Nice, man. Uh, Omar, yes. My aunt Raina is there. If you want to, if you want to ask her some memories of the life of women, she's the one to speak to. The the one that has the name Galaxy A seventy one. Yes, yeah. You must do it in Arabic, though. She's got no English. Can you can you remind me of her name, please? Raina, Raina Navi. Oh, Navi Navi. Uh, maybe na maybe it's on my name, Nava Navi. Nava na Nava Navi. Uh, Nana, yes. uh, Nana, Nana. Uh, Nava, Nava. Nava. Arab person, I don't call Nana. They know how to call the Nisa Al Kbar. Call Aliya Nana. Ah, okay. To the Karinshian, the meat Marena. To the Karin, to the Karinshian, and Hayaki will move it. Rena, Rena. Ima, he asks, he remembers the things from Iraq. Do you remember the name of the Hayatki in Mosul? Mosul, yes. Mosul, yes. Yes, yes. I remember everything a lot. A lot of problems. They brought us the Raggi from the Shams to the house of Abdi Nabi. The Shams Raggi, the Nai Al-Aal, the Mewa, the Khudra, وكل كل هاي المسائل يجيبوها كل شيء مليحة وتازة وخضرة ومتوكا وحلوة كتير 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 نتذكر هربي مسائل حبيبي أنت مراد عن النبي من قرايبك مراد مكابي مكابي كين أيش خصكي مكابي إيه؟ ابونا المكابي وزوجي اخوه اه اوكي كان ساكنين يعني هو ابن كان ساكنين هو كانوا ساكنين بكريات اتا ما هكذا ايه عبد النبي بكريات اتا نخون اهلي هم كانوا بكريات اتا مش باحد شلم شلم ايه شاؤول اخوي وموشي موشي ابوه الثاني أبو إيه. السامي بلندن موشي أخوي كان كتير سنين بلندن مش أميل 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 عبد النبي كان يشتغل بالبي بي سي نخون أميل عبد النبي كان يشتغل بالبي بي سي نخون تمام أميل عبد النبي هو نفسه أميل كوهين حق معاه نخون لا ما هو أميل عبد النبي كان يشتغل بالبي بي سي كان عمكي كان بلندن أش كان أش كان يخصكي؟ أولاد العم نحن. آه أوكي. أخونا الموريس. إيه. أنا أنا 
ايفيت عبد النبي ايفيت عبد النبي ايفيت عبد النبي تعرف فيها؟ تجد انه هي اخت موريس موريس ايفيت اخت اخته الموريس اه الاميل هي كمان بلندن استاذ ايميل ممكن تكمل الحكي مع انت أنا ما أريد أقاطعكم. كمل على أي موضوع. اسأل <تصفيق> اسأل أي سؤال. أكو أكية ال 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 اليهود اللي كانوا بالموصل. إيه. نعم. يختلفون من اليهود اللي هم في بغداد. لأن اليهود ببغداد كانت حال حالتهم كلش مليحة. صح. كلش عيل. المحل مالتنا كلش مليحة. اليهود في الموصل يعني الموصل درجة كانت كني أقل تمام كان كانوا كانوا أكثر فقرا من يهود بغداد الموصل عشنا عيشة طيبة اي اي اكيد مليحة اكيد وعشنا مع الجار كأن مثل مثل الأخوة والخوات هاي القاعدة أقول أنتم على قدكم مع المسلمين والمسيحيين كثير كنا أحسن سوى. مثل الاخوه إيه؟ مثل الاخوه من اليهود مال بغداد مع المسيحيين وال... والاسلام انتم كنتم كثير احسن نحن كنا اكثر منهم كثير أيه. احسن منهم من دمجين اكثر من دمجين اكثر نحن كنا هذا العم وهذا الخال إيه؟ يعني كان إيه؟ عندنا احترام معهم كلش كثير هم من يحترموكم آه. الموصل كانوا ناس طيبين كثير مع العرب ومع المسيحيين اي نعم كنا صدقان كثير مم. كان عندنا دكتور يونس بشير دكتور عبد الله سرسم الله يرحمه آه كلنا كنا مثل الاخوه كان يجوا عندنا على البيت اصحابنا تعرفين تعرفين داوود الشلبي؟ و- و- واخونا العبد النبي كان دكتور دكتور فاضل عبد النبي هذا اخو 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 زوجي كان سمعتي كان سمعتي الاسم داوود الشلبي الطبيب داوود الشلبي دكتور تعرفينه دكتور اسمه داوود الشلبي داوود الشلبي لا جوز ما تعرفين يعني. لا ما تعرف سليمان سليمان الصاير سليمان الصاير مي الناس الصاير سليمان الصاير يجوز ما تتذكرون يجوا بذول من اي عصر يعني كانوا بالخ... بالاربعينات ابوي ابوي كان صاير ابوي كان صاير وكان عنده دكان بالسوق واخوي كان شاؤول كان عنده آه الحانوت مالته كانت تجاره يبيع اقمشه بباعة بباعة شكرا 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 جزيلا. Uh, I, I would like to, I would like to, uh, I would like to call Aidan Orba. He is he is uh, uh, using the phone, but I would like to uh, him to give his opinion as a young person who is also working on collecting memories of the Jewish community of Mosul. Aidan, can you close your phone now and stay with us, please? كثير اصحابنا تاسفوا تاسفوا معنا I don't I don't want to stop them talking I want them to continue but it's exactly what you want I didn't want them to continue speaking because this is this is what we were waiting for is that they speak they 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 give these small details that some Like the, such details, we cannot find it in books. We cannot actually read it in newspapers or even in documents. No matter how detailed these documents are, it's only uh, what they tell and how uh, they did because we want to make sense of how the Jewish neighborhood in Mosul looked like and how did they interact? How did they see Mosul? How, what did they feel about, about the city of Mosul itself, the architecture of Mosul? In their, in their mind, how was it? How, what did they do when they used to walk in the streets of the city? Uh, all of this 
kind of mix of, of, of cultures and religions in the city of Mosul, did they feel that they were part of the city or they were isolated? Because there are, there are conflicted documents tell us different narratives of how their life was in Mosul. And yes, the Jewish population in Baghdad, in terms of, 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 of their economical life, it was much better in Baghdad than it was in Mosul because I read it, at least in the French documents that the French government was sending lots of financial support to the Jewish uh, community of Mosul. And uh, there, there, there are lists of names who were benefiting from the support. Aidan, thank you for coming back as a young researcher who is also trying to do similar work on collecting and recreating this narrative. What can we do as young researchers, young historians, in order to reconstruct this memory and put it back as, as, as I say, there is a missing piece. We have, we have to work together to put back this missing piece. Hey, Omar, thank you very much uh, for calling me. Um, I, I actually, I, I admire your work. I think it's very important. And I think it's a very important piece in a much larger puzzle, uh, which includes not only Jews, uh, a larger puzzle that brings together uh, other minorities, other groups, uh, be it, uh, I would say, ethnic, or religious, uh, and the Jews play an important role. They play an important role in what used to be Iraq in the past, and the Jews of Mosul, of course, are a very important part of that, but there's, there are also uh, Christians, Assyrians, and, and a Chaldean, and, and so on and so forth, Armenian. Uh, there are Yazidis uh, that I've been working on uh, over the past 15 years, and there are other groups, and I think uh, the histories of these groups are uh, intermingled and intertwined. And we have to find, all, each and every one of us, each and every one of us has to find the, the right piece of the puzzle and put it together with the other pieces. Uh, putting things together uh, as to enlarge the picture that we have of Iraq at that time. And I think it also has a very, uh, a, a big importance for people nowadays in Iraq, because I, I spoke with a lot of people that told me, non-Jews, I, I almost spoke to uh, exclusively with non-Jews, be it Yazidis or Christians or Turkmen, uh, that have been saying that, in particular, the history of the Jews, the Jews that were expelled from Iraq, is of a very high importance to them, because they are thinking about their faith in Iraq, about possible futures for themselves in Iraq. And they see what happened to the Jews of Iraq uh, some 70 years ago as a possible future for themselves. They are looking at Iraq at the current moment and the chaos and, and um, the state in which the, the minority groups are at in Iraq. And they, they try to imagine uh, an optional future that, including, that, that includes uh, their being driven out of Iraq in the future, perhaps. And, and it's actually happening slowly yes. and, and quietly. Yazidis and Christians are being driven out of Iraq. So now, after what happened in and around Mosul in 2014 to 2017, this possible future is becoming uh, a very, very, um, you know, tangible present. And people are, are now seeing that what happened to the Jews should have been a lesson learned in the past. And had it been learned in the past, perhaps it wouldn't have happened when ISIS came to Iraq in 2014. So I think what you are doing and what many other people here are doing and, and what I was trying to do with the Yazidis and Christians is a very important thing, not only historically, but to the current, to, to current affairs in Iraq and the, the way people see their state in Iraq. So I thank you and I thank everyone. It's, it's 
fascinating. It was fascinating to hear the the memories from Mosul, and 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 I found many things that really interested me. And and, and you know, I was working also on Kirkuk, another place with with a big uh, Jewish community. So I heard many similar stories from the very few uh, Kirkukli Jews that I I spoke with. Uh, and it, it's very interesting. Thank you very much for having this event and, and, and finally seeing you, uh, not only Thank talking you. to you. Ho hopefully we will meet soon. Yes. I don't want to keep you on your laptop because I know it's, 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 it's not nice to stay more than one hour on your laptop watching a screen, probably listening to a boring young historian. That's why I would like, and I apologize that I didn't tell you this, for your excellency Karim Khan. I would like to give you the final word because you are working on justice and accountability in Iraq. And we are learning from you how to continue our life uh, with acknowledging uh, uh, of justice of diversity, uh, white nation uh, that we should live together because there is no other alternative to this. Well, thank you so much, uh, Omar, and to my brothers and sisters um, that have uh, joined this occasion. In fact, it's very moving, uh, very uh, melancholic, sad, inspiring, all intermingled. What history shows, of course, is that when religions are persecuted, whether it is the Jewish community throughout history, whether it is Catholics in, uh, in England or elsewhere, and they have to emigrate because there is a binary choice between what they believe and how they worship and their lives, the country that they flee is the loser and the country that receives them is the winner. But I think the event is really an important one because the memory of Jews in Mosul is the memory of humanity. It is something that is precious to all communities and I think also for the people of Iraq. Uh, UNITAD has played special regard, in fact, to the importance of faith in terms of tackling the un-Islamic state, which I maintain as a Muslim is the most un-Islamic state perhaps we've seen in a very long time. A, a ideology driven by cruelty, oppression, and a lack of freedom of belief, the antithesis of la ikraha fiddin. And so because of that, together with the United Nations Special Advisor on the Prevention of Genocide, His Excellency Adama Dieng, early on, I went out and I engaged different religious communities across Iraq, uh, both uh, Sayyid Sistani of the Shia, the Muslim Council of the Sunnis, uh, Cardinal Sacco for the Christians, the Kakai, uh, um, and the Yazidis. Uh, and in March this year, we signed a, uh, or they signed, with the uh, assistance of the United Nations, UNITAD, and the special advisor, a historic interfaith agreement in which all the religious communities found common ground that uh, justice is a requirement. It is, of course, extremely sad that to the best of my knowledge, we, there is no Jewish religious leader in Iraq that can sign that interfaith statement because they are part of the history of humanity uh, and the history of Iraq. So all I will say is that the the work, Omar, you're doing, the, uh, the work, some of the professors uh, uh, that we have uh, heard from uh, are doing is something really valuable, not just to the Jewish community, but for anybody who respects diversity and pluralism. So with that, I'll say Shalom, Aslam Alaikum Ramdala, and thank you so much for hosting this event. It's really been an honor and a joy as well to uh, be a, a, a participant in it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Your Excellency, for, for your important words. Thank you, everyone, and especially to Sally, who opened the door to this beautiful gathering and conversation. I wish 
I can give you all the time to speak more and more, but I know that some of you might be tired. I am sure we will speak again and we will continue this. I, you cannot imagine how happy I am, how happy I feel because I feel myself related to you because you are part from oh. my city. I am from Mosul, you are from Mosul. And this, this makes me extremely happy. I am not speaking to strangers. I'm speaking to a family. Please, all of you stay safe. Be careful of Corona. We will pass this as we did pass many other problems back in the history. We will pass this. And we, we one day will meet and uh, I promise you that the synagogue of Mosul will be rebuilt and it will be open and it will not be a museum. It will be a place of worship where Jews can come back and uh, worship freely uh, uh, and where, we can, where you can also uh, hold Passover and other uh, 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 religious important holidays for you. Please stay safe, all of you. I hope to see you in, in person one day. Shalom, salam alaikum, ma salam. Thank you, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.